Why, hello there. It's extremely early in the morning on Wednesday, November 24th, 2021. How's it going? It's it's a Ken Braverman sports algorithm update. One of those days where um, I'm glad I did work. I thank you, Waddell. Thank you for people who just like, anybody who sends me, like, you send me like 20 bucks and I'm like, oh my God, I will do something for you and I'll create the algorithm for you. It's just like when I don't hear from anybody, I'm like, was anybody really paying attention to this or should I just like do something else today? <laughs> Cause you know, I, I don't do everything every day, uh, but I've started to because so many people are asking for it. Anyway, let me give you a little overview of what's going on in the video. So I don't just start rambling incessantly for the entire video here. So we're going to start this video talking about hockey and recapping the hockey game uh, games from Tuesday night. Then we're going to talk about NFL, Thanksgiving NFL, a preliminary look at the three, I believe there are three games on Thanksgiving Day on Thursday. We're going to talk about those. I'm going to show you about my round robin that I've prepared, but NFL is not done yet, and I'll talk more about that as we get to the NFL part. And then the end of the video, we, we will go as long as I feel like going about college basketball because college basketball is having a pretty good day. And the, the pretty good day. Yeah, it is. I, I know I'm tired. I had, a, I had a glass of wine. I'm telling you, I, I'm tired. But I do want to get this video up because there's so much I want to talk about. Um, and uh, there's one game going on still on the list for college basketball. It's UCD at Sacramento, and we have Sacramento as an underdog, and they're up by 12 with two minutes left. We're having a heck of a day on there. All right, so I, I'm going to make another slow down talking broad statement, which is, hey, everybody's been asking me advice on stuff, and I'd love to give good advice. As a matter of fact, one of, one of my New Year's resolutions for 2022 will be to not read the algorithms wrong and make bad bets. Make good bets by reading the algorithm right. I think that that's something I should do. Instead of always looking for for what's wrong and for some reason focusing on it, which is what I think I'm doing when I'm finding losers everywhere, I'm finding good lines where there shouldn't be good lines and I'm betting on those games and those games are losers. That, that's what I think happens because I have a weird way of having the worst betting instincts. But the algorithm itself reads out great information. So let's start with hockey and we'll talk about bets. And because it's important, this is sort of a, it's, it's a betting aid as well as a predicting mechanism for, for the games. But I, of course, was shooting at targets at a roller hockey rink to prove that Tampa Bay was going to win tonight. And I hit my target and so did Tampa Bay. They also scored four goals. I mean, somewhere between three and five, right? That's four. Um, how about that? Tampa Bay wins without a problem. I hit the target. That's just a great day. And poor off the wall hockey guy. I feel you, man. Dude, Edmonton didn't play. Ottinger, by the way, did we not see this? Look at this. Look at this 82% goalie rating for Ottinger before the game happened. Um, that's the best goaltender on here. And I think the lesson to be learned in a game like this is that goaltending matters. Goaltending matters. And goaltenders are such a pivotal point in a game that when you have a goaltender that for some reason has a fantastic rating for Dallas and you're going up against, I call him Principal Skinner because I see the name Skinner, I just think Principal Skinner, but he's not nearly as good. He's not Koskin and I believe he's the other guy who's better. And sure enough, you get a loss out of Edmonton and Dallas wins this game and and the algorithm loses this game. The algorithm knew it wasn't a good pick and Calgary, or at least the better pick of the three, Calgary comes down and wins here easily. I shouldn't say easily. They, they took the lead late in the third. But um, anyway, I made a bet. I made a bet today. I made a three-team three, three team bet. And after I was shooting pucks at roller hockey, I got Tampa Bay mid-game minus one and a half because I hit the target. So I was like, Tampa Bay's definitely crushing it today. So, so I bet them, got that. I took Edmonton because I trusted my the algorithm and off the wall hockey guy, and I thought, you know, McDavid's good. They'll probably score. Didn't look at Odinger and didn't realize that that I should have bet the under and not bet this game. Lose that pick. That changes the payout here. But I also bet the over in this game. I don't know why. I got lucky. Overs and unders are overs and unders in hockey. You're just guessing. So I, you win money in here barely. 
and I did. And this really should have been a non-play, or I should have just you should have just bet Tampa Bay. That, that's kind of what I said in all my videos. I, I'll even add another hockey video at the end of this that we did that didn't get published earlier because my computer ran out of battery. So, so all right, so that's hockey for the day. Uh, it's okay, in my opinion. As a matter of fact, it, it, when you put the scores in, it doesn't even favor Edmonton anymore. You can see they go to a negative 3%, but, but before the scores went in, it changed this stuff. It, it was positive for Edmonton. But look at that. Goalies matter. That's what we learned today. Now, for all you that were waiting, let's talk about football on Thursday anyway. So I got an email. I got uh, yeah, at least one person asked me about football. And here's the way I look at it. I haven't received any money from anybody specifically since about a week ago when it comes to anything football related. One guy sent me a bunch of money to start NBA. That guy's awesome. And I will have NBA, believe it or not, on Thanksgiving night. I'll be releasing the NBA version. Um, I've started on it exactly zero amount. I literally have not even started a file name called NBA yet, but I can still promise you guys that I will have an NBA version that predicts Friday's games on Thanksgiving night, uh, unless something happens to me along the way. But if, if, I'm, if I'm able to, I will absolutely have it done. And, um, and, and anyway, so, so that's going to be coming for all my, my friends. I mean, friends of 20 years are like, dude, I can't wait for NBA. Everybody I talk to is like, oh, no, I don't bet college. I bet NBA. You know what? You're going to get it out of me, even though I don't watch NBA. Although... Although if LeBron's going to be punching people in the eye every night and it's like MBMMA, MMA, whatever, I'll watch that. I'm not, I'm not lying. I'll watch that. So, all right, back to football. So what I have done with as people have been emailing me saying, you know, you got to give me football ready. I was I went on a jag about NBA and, and NCAA and everything else because I do so many of these that when I get an email and people are like, hey man, when are you doing the NFL algorithm? I was like, you know what? When are the games? I was like, there's a Thursday night game. I was like, oh crap, it's Thanksgiving. Oh, right. Oh, right. There are three games. Oh yeah, you guys probably do want to know what's happening here on Wednesday. I was like, all right, I'll do a video on Wednesday. But I started the process of setting this thing up, but I have to work on all the players. We got to do this. I got to make sure we got all our players in the right spot. It's going to be errors all over the place. I mean, it's going to be errors everywhere. Even though the trade, like, what's going on here? Dontrell Hillard, who you play for, dude? I don't know. Quadri Olson, I don't know. The answer is I got to look it up. So there's a lot of work still needs to be done. So it's not final. But I know everyone's like, what the hell is the picks for Thursday night? So we've got a preliminary look, and that's why I want to talk about it while, while I wait for the UCD Sacramento game to end, which has a minute 32 left. Then we can be final for college basketball and look at that for the day. It's the other reason why I wanted to talk about NFL in this video, to kill some time. So what is the pick? The answer is I already made a round robin. Let's see what it is. Let's see if I know what I'm talking about, if I'm trying not to lose anymore. I said take the Lions. Now, now what I just said, I'm trying not to lose anymore, and the first thing you see is me, the Lions to win, a team that has not won a game all season. You might say, Ken, what's wrong with you? And the answer is a lot, but I like them. Why? Because I'm listening to the algorithm. It's the number one pick of Thursday. They don't have a good um, win score, which means empirically the season stats say no. They say, no, you don't win. But the projected score says yes. And the projected score is smarter. And it says yes, and it says a lot of points. It says the Bears' defense is injured. It says that. They have a 70% injured. So is the Lions. So there's going to be a lot of points in this game, apparently, on Thanksgiving. Alternate score still has the Lions winning. The Lions haven't won a game all year, and the Bears suck. All those coming together say the Giants, you take them at 145 or you take them plus three, which we'll talk about in that parlay and Ron Robin in a second. But it's number one on the list. I, I'm at past to the point of arguing, arguing with the algorithm. When I update player stats and injury report for Thursday morning, which is really when I would like to review the week and get that out, I really don't want to do it any sooner. But if you guys really want it, I mean, nobody's paid me for a week. If somebody sends me money, I'll feel guilty enough to work on it and get it done faster. Simple as that. I don't, I don't want to beg, but like, why should I run and do it for free when nobody's paid me in a week for this? That's all I'm saying. <laughs> so if you want to do that, then I'll probably do it faster. But I will give you the Thursday night round robin, or the Thursday uh, Thanksgiving round robin, which is, it says that this game is too close. It says the Raiders cover seven here because Dallas has some weird issues even at home. 
Even the alternate score has them at only four, and it's only, it's seven. And so if Dallas runs away with it, that's inconsistent with how they've been playing recently. They got a huge win score, so I understand why they're getting favored by seven, but the projected score says no. It says the Raiders are under less pressure than the Cowboys, I think, in this game, and it'll show in the score, and it seems like the Raiders are going to cover a touchdown. So I put the Raiders plus a touchdown because I'm listening to the algorithm. Algorithm says the Raiders cover. Algorithm did great on the spread last week. You want to know how great the algorithm did on the spread last week? Week 11. Let's open everything up. When it told you what spread picks to pick, like when it said by projected score which team you should take, it was 8 and freaking 3 on the top of the list. Am I even going down further? But I'm just showing you teams that it favored to win. And bam. And the ones we lost, the Jets, who we never bet. So that's like accidentally there. Saints is a loss, Panthers is a loss, but the Lions won. It's really 8-2 and two in my opinion because you know to ignore the Jets. Anyway, um, so it's great on the spread. So I'm thinking, uh, what did I just highlight out of this here? The only one that's good on the spread is apparently Detroit on Thursday. That's kind of interesting because we had that just highlighted in the slicer for a second. So that's, that's how strong the algorithm thinks Detroit is over the Bears. It makes a lot of sense. The Bears are not a good team. If Detroit is going to get a win this year, it's going to be against a team like the Bears. So it says Raiders plus seven. Then it says Saints plus five and a half because Buffalo is a mess right now. Buffalo has just dropped a couple. They haven't looked like themselves, and the Saints probably really want to win. And this game's in New Orleans. Taking five and a half is great. So I took that also. Where's the round robin? So it's all right here. So with the $100 round robin bet for football for, for Thanksgiving, it's this to try to get about four and a half to one. And if for some reason you're wrong about the Lions winning, shocker, you still break about even. And if it's not the Lions, it's something else, like the Raiders don't cover, you actually make money slightly. So in this sense, I think I think you you probably hit at least two out of three. And on a good day, you catch the Lions winning. And you could always take the Lions plus three here is the other thing you can do. If you think that maybe they won't win, but they'll cover the three, see how that changes your payout. Instead of four and a half to one, now you're three and a half to one. But, it, it, you know, it, if it's a much stronger pick, it's, you know, it's only, right? What was the difference? Four, 548 to 447, it's about 100 bucks. It's a, still a field goal. I, I'm, I'm contemplating on switching that myself. So... That's football for Thursday, but it's not final. You're going to get another video out of me Thursday morning with the whole week, so there may be changes to this. Are they going to be substantial? I think I feel like they might affect this game because this game's really close already, and it might affect this game too, so be careful. Wait till my video on Thursday morning to actually make the bet. Why make it now? Like, I don't know why you guys... I know you guys want to look at stuff, but, like, why make the bet now? Like, unless you have to, like, physically go somewhere to do it. All right. Let's go to college basketball. Let's close NFL. I'm done talking about NFL. Let's close NHL. I like to close out tabs. I like to close out tabs. And let's then talk about college basketball for the day. And is this game over between Sacramento State and UC Davis? And my phone says it has moved and that it is over. And the answer is, of course, we got the underdog and they won. Uh, sorry, Sacramento State won. They're upside down on ESPN because this was a neutral site game. And we got it. We are 32-19 and 19 for the day. And it is now time to import this full list into the algorithm, which is right here. And now that we've done that and we look like it lines up properly, we can now refresh our picks. And we will see that we were 32 and 19 for the day. Let's not care about health percentages right now. 24 and 27 on the spread with this. All right. Um, so this is good. Uh, 32 and 19 is okay. How about our home teams? So, okay, let me refresh for a second. So we moved on to college basketball, which is a little different from the, the other things that we just talked about in the sense that college basketball is a numbers game in every sense of the word. There are, for example, 51 games in here. Way, 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 way too many for a human being to sit and watch every day and have a good idea of the players on those teams and how those games went by physically watching the game. 
of course, us, us humans cannot watch that many games. So I try to grab the statistics from those games and form opinions based on the statistics because you can't physically watch them. That's what the algorithm does. And we see what the results were when it predicted who would win and who would lose. And, and everybody asks me, and of course, I have the same question as you, which is, hey, Ken, what do I bet today? Like, what's going to make me this money? What am I supposed to do? And the goal of the algorithm is to make the answer to that question just a couple clicks away. And here's what I mean. I'm like, oh, what were our home underdogs? Oh, snap. Looks like we went five and one on our home underdogs. And because we were able to go, I didn't even realize we did this good. And Central Michigan covers on top of that. This right here is disgusting. This is disgusting right here. I didn't even realize this is good. So the answer, the whole point of what I was just talking about was we're supposed to be able to click two things and know what to bet on our round robin. Well, my God, what did this pay? I didn't do this because I was out playing hockey and shooting at targets. Freaking not betting. What happened? All right, so this and Central Michigan lost. So if you put 100 bucks on this 16 round robin, what would you have done? These are all dogs, so you would have done something like, mm, mm, something like this. Oh, you got to be kidding me. What? No fucking way. Are you fucking kidding me? Oh, my God. I hate my life sometimes. I didn't, son of a bitch. Are you serious? Now, I always said, I said, don't, don't take Coastal Carolina. Don't ever listen to me, ever. And guess what? Guess what? If you took them all on the spread instead because you got points with all of them and you're a smart gambler, then all the lines are minus 110. It said you hit them all. So I'm just going to assume you hit them all. Maybe you put the points in there. You also win the same amount. As the, as the one you lost. Wow, how about that? 10 to 1. Son of a bitch. Unbelievable. Um, did anybody do that? Oh, God. How do I miss this? All right. Okay. Uh, well, those are our home underdogs, which clearly made money. Let's look at the away underdogs. Not as good. All right, let's just back down to earth at least. Jesus Christ. Away underdogs make sense. Home underdog. So this is what the algorithm is supposed to be about. It's supposed to say these picks that pop up, you do round robins with them. And today was a 10 to 1 day apparently. And I don't think anybody bet it because I didn't focus on it. And everything covered the spread. Unbelievable. Un-freaking believable. I mean, I didn't want to make this video too complicated because the truth is... is like I, I can end up going through all of this and talking about the strings and what the formulas did and how we need to change the standings and strength of schedule. And the truth is, is I have a million other things to do that are more important. It just so happens that this is such a money maker because there are so many games that I, even I can't get away from doing the work on this. But you guys should really send me money to work on this because it's going to make everybody money. It's, it, instead of me fighting it, nobody sending me money and me being like, oh, I'm not going to focus on it today. If people actually sent me money for this, if I got like 500 in my account from like 10 different people tomorrow to do this, I would blow, I'd work three hours on this thing to make this thing win, win like almost every game. <laughs> I swear to God. Um, anyway, all right. Um, unbelievable. Unbelievable. Main loses. I had them because I suck. Um, I didn't take a Lipscomb. They're away. Well, oh yeah, what happened with just our home teams? Twenty and eight. We hit the top nine. Lose with Maine. Yep, of course, because I had them. The South Dakota State loses to Washington. You, nobody knows that these are true home games either, so it's complicated. <laughs> I said Fullerton would beat us. They don't. Texas Rio Grande wins at plus 390. God, don't. Oh, yeah. The pick of the day. I said Yale over something. You say freaking blow it in overtime. So me. Don't listen to me. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. And Central Michigan covers the spread. Florida. I do listen to me about Florida Gulf. 
Gulf Coast. I did make the proper assessment there. Towson wins. Drexel wins as an underdog. Everything was pretty darn good home-wise. Um, yeah, the, the, new, the new distribution worked here. It's good. It worked pretty well. Scores, I, I, when I was entering in scores, some of them were just phenomenal. There was a game, there was a game I was doing here at the end. It was like, it was like the projected score was like 72, 79, and, and, and the actual score was 73, 79. I just thought, I mean, I was just like, wow. I'm like, wow, this algorithm is crazy. It was this, it was this game. It's Tennessee State game. We predicted 79, 74. A game that it that that the uh, odds maker said uh, Nebraska has a 17 points that they're going to lay, and we thought this was only going to be a five point game, and it ends up being a six point game, one point off our prediction. The kind of stuff that this algorithm is doing is batshit crazy. I mean, really, right? Like this freaking unbelievable. So, all right, well. The question, I mean, I, I, like, I'm going to reset for a second and be like, well, Ken, if you built this awesome algorithm that predicts everything all the time, is really great, how do you make money with it? What do you bet every day? And, and it's just what I said. It's home underdogs. They're, they're supposed to win. And if you look at them over the entire history of what we've been doing, they're only 18 and 18, but the beginning, I wouldn't, I wouldn't focus on it in the beginning, actually. Because we, we had old stats. Just the last like five days, let's see here. Just the last five days since I moved to the new file. Whoa, we're only 8 and 14. Do we had a really bad week? Oh my God. Wow. All right. Well, we're good above certain margins. Um, Jesus. Yeah. Wow. I, okay. So some of these teams aren't really home because of all the tournaments. All right. It's complicated. It's a complicated answer. Um, it's a complicated answer. I have to leave you with it's a complicated answer. So I, I just, I, I don't want to be begging people for money. I really don't because it's not what this is about. But, but I will tell you that I, I just can't, I can't spend all my time on this just because it could be getting better all the time if I did simply because it's so hard and it, and it, it, it itches at me to make it better. And there's so many trials to test yourself every day. Like, you can create a new distribution every day and really test something out every day with a l big sample. It's like, it's a data scientist's dream. I mean, it really is. Like you, you don't have to wait a week for a game. It's every day there's dozens, right? And, and that's what kind of draws me into it because there's, there's so much value. I have to be honest with you. I don't have the answer because this doesn't always work. It did today. did today. And I know a couple times a week it'll do this, but it doesn't work every day because we're still working on it. But but in terms of and this list is by the way is going to shrink as we get through the season as the odds makers use the algorithm more. We won't have as many options. But as for right now, we'll continue to use this. And tomorrow I will do a video crafting a bet with the home underdogs or at least home teams if they're not underdogs, but definitely home teams. It has to be a home team. I, I, you know, I made some bets. I did make some bets on college basketball today, and I didn't really make money. And I lost money on away teams plus points every single time. And it's just like you should really ignore away. We were 12 and 11 on away teams, 10 and 3. We should have just ignored all of them, except some of them won as underdogs, right? How many away underdogs? was? It? Yeah, we were only 3 and 7. We hit a 230. A 320, I said play that game. Oh, no, but but I didn't say play. That wasn't one of our home underdogs. Wow, we hit Sacramento State. And it, this was a neutral site game, though, so I don't think they were really away. Yeah, that matters. See, so much information. Stephen F. Austin beats Buffalo. We had that, too. Yikes. This actually almost makes money. 235, almost. Almost. Not quite, though, I don't think. Um... All right, too much talking, too too crazy. Um, so I, the takeaway from today is that the new distribution worked worked much better, and our home underdogs are something that we should consider in a round robin, and our home teams in general. The the lines up here, other than Coastal Carolina, which of course won. This is a neutral site game, though they weren't really home. 
I, I got. I'm sorry. I, I get so upset with the neutral site games because it's screwing up everything. Like we home and away matters so much in college basketball that a neutral site game is a completely different game in my opinion. And so I'm I'm really just torn as I go over the list because it's just so complicated right now. I don't think this is going to be a problem after the holiday. I don't think there are going to be tournaments all the time. There's probably going to be Christmas tournaments maybe. But then it'll be nothing until March, and I think that this will be normal home and away. We can calm down because this is driving me crazy. Another reason I don't want to work on this unless people are sending me money about it all the time. All right, guys, but this is a pretty good day and certainly was for the home underdogs. If any of you guys played these and hit, um, because I have mentioned it before, God bless you. All right, um... I'll be back tomorrow with the hockey video, with a college basketball update, and you know what the home underdogs are for tomorrow. I'm sure I haven't even looked yet. Um, no football tomorrow, but I will do the football Thursday morning now. And NBA comes out on Thanksgiving, and I haven't even started it yet. So get excited. All right? So good luck, everybody. That was the recap for Tuesday night. It was a long one, but there was a lot to talk about. So good luck, man. Like, makes me laugh. Oh my goodness, what's going on everybody? Hey, it's an NHL algorithm update. We are at the, wa something associated with the Washington Capitals. It's a uh, Capitals trailside roller hockey rink. Great secret place. Secret location. It is a secret location. <gasps> we have some targets set up down there because we've got three picks of the day. And after reviewing it prior to this video, it's like, well, what do I tell everybody to play? Because usually everything that comes out of my mouth is wrong. But today, after really reviewing it, it is Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay is the best pick. I agree with number one. The other two games, uh, Edmonton and Dallas, looks like it might be closer depending on the goaltending matchup. And that Chicago line is just too juicy at 210 with them playing well. So what we're going to do is we're going to try to shoot and see if we can hit a target or at least get it in the net. You want to take a first shot? All right. Huh? Where's the ball? Go ahead. All right, shoot for Tampa Bay. Go. Yeah. You got to hit a target. If it doesn't hit a target, it doesn't count. Nope, nice try. I'll see what I can do. This is the Edmonton over. Oh, just missed. Bills, one shot? Go for it. Yeah, terrible. Oh, so close. Go grab it. means when we're losing pucks and it's getting dark it's time to go well good luck everybody if there's one thing you do tonight it's tampa bay to win